Hey, hey, what's up? Happy Tuesday. It's Christine Horn, the Boogie Magnet. Listen, you are in for a huge treat. This is an exclusive, a special Actors Daily Bread because I am getting to introduce and interview my mentor, my friend, my fake daddy, uncle, cousin, <laughs> Freddie Hendricks, who I talk about all the time. If you've been wondering how I keep my standards so high and where that began, it is with this man right here. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> So what's up? This is Actors Daily Bread. This is where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. I'm Christine Horn, known as the Bookie Magnet, founder of Hollywood Bound Actors. Oh, sorry, there we go. If you're not a member of Hollywood Bound Actors, you have to totally join us. We have an amazing podcast, Facebook group, an amazing, amazing community. And so this is Actors Daily Bread. We have hundreds of videos on YouTube already. Um, and yeah, if you don't know me, I'm Christine Horn actor, coach, man, just uh, out here in these streets, just like you. And my my goal and my mission is to empower actors to have the career they dream of. So I'm going to bring Freddie on the screen. Freddie Hendrix, what's up? Introduce yourself. Where are you from? And how did you even get into the arts? Hello, everybody. Uh, peace and blessings to you. My name is Freddie Hendrix. I am from Columbus, Georgia. I'm an army brat. My parents, well, my father was military. And uh, I kind of grew up in Columbus, Georgia, where I started singing, like when I was around 13. And after that, I uh, went to Lincoln University and I majored in speech and theater arts. And after I got that degree, I moved to Atlanta and started working and I have been involved in the arts ever since. Now, I think it's almost 45 years I've been in the arts. Ooh, 45. And, um, I'm just in love as a creator, as an artist, as a mentor, as an inspirer. Yes. Yeah. As a person who just believes, just believes in love and the love of other people, because I think that's yeah. the catalyst for everything in our lives, especially as actors, you know? Yeah. We have to love ourselves before we can love our art. Mm. Write, know, that Write that down. Write that down. And a lot of people don't into that, Christine. You know, a lot of, well, a lot of, I would say a lot of teachers, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. You go into a classroom, they open the book on the first day, <laughs> And they say, turn to chapter one or whatever chapter, and they don't know who's in the classroom. They haven't connected with, with the students. They, so therefore they do not know the needs of the students. So how can you teach them? You know, and I think that's important. In my workshops, I get to know everybody before I start. I say, hello, how are you? Show everybody love, let them know that they are worthy, that they are appreciated. And I am so thrilled and happy that they are there there with me in that moment. Anybody who knows me or who's been coaching with me, I know my Bookmore TV Magic students begins. in their circle, y'all know I'm always saying love, love, spread love, spread love. And Freddie, I got that love blueprint from you. Yeah? Okay, good. Because, because that's I important. Feel that. Yeah. That's everything, Christine. That's the key. That's the key. You know, um, some a lot of us pretend to love other things outside of us, and the 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 tragic part about that is we're loving everything outside of us, and we're not loving ourselves. So we're not exercising that really muscle. So therefore, how are you able to love everybody else when you don't know what it is? You know, so um, and that's so important for actors. You know, you have to you have to know that you're worthy of everything. You walk into an audition room, not only do you have to be prepared, you have to know that thing, that particular part. And like I tell actors all the time, and I don't know what your philosophy on this is, but I believe that an actor should not walk into an audition just to get the audition. I think auditioning is a technique within itself. 
I agree. And, and that's something that you in to become the best auditioner that you can. Because like I said, auditioning is an art within itself. And you have to master that. I remember when I was an actor <laughs> and uh, I would go to auditions and I would, uh, and I would uh, audition and I would think, okay, you did pretty good. And I would go home and sit by the phone. No, not yet, Freddie. And after a couple of years, Dad, it gets old. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? So what happened, I said, okay, I need to start, I need to try something new. And when I tried it, it began began to work. I would I would walk in prepared as being the best that I could be. So when I walk would walk out of that door. I would say, yes, Freddie, you did that. You were great. So then I wouldn't worry about it anymore. That was over. It was on to the next one. So that's my philosophy as far as auditioning. I love that. That because y'all, I have to get my fan. Y'all know when it get good, it's hot. It gets hot. I got this new hair on. Whew. Freddie, I love that. I don't know if you can Can you, huh? I got hot. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> No, I was telling my audience I get to sweating when it get good, so I had to go get the, my Beyonce fan. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie, but you know, you started a theater company called the Freddie Hendrix Youth Ensemble of Atlanta, and you changed the lives of hundreds of kids at the time. Can you share a little bit about? The story, I know the story, but for the audience of the dream and what inspired you to teach kids. Okay, uh, first of all, I'm glad that you said that I've changed so many lives, but I want to make this re really clear. You all changed mine too. It was an even exchange. You know, we changed mm -hmm. each other's lives. But actually, this was not a dream. This was a vision that God gave me. And I'm not going to go into that because it's a long story but it was that children at my window like were calling out to me because I was an actor I was making a living as an actor you know I was paying my bills you know I was yeah it was able to pay our note I was able to do all that I was happy and and God gave me this vision and I was torn I was really really torn because I didn't want to give up my acting career mm. but the thing about that is and that I realized that you have to jump when you're told to jump, you have to realize when you're chosen and you have to, you have to act on that, you know? Yeah. So um, um, in 1990, and this vision came like, uh, I would say maybe like June of 1990. And uh, one day I left my apartment because I had, was kind of locked in my apartment for a minute because this vision that God gave me kind of really startled me. I mean, it stayed me back taking uh, calls from my agents, uh, other theater companies, everything. So one Saturday morning, I started walking, and it was as if something, a hand was in my back, and I was just walking and walking, walking and walking and walking and walking. And I ended up in this place, and I looked up and said, Arts Exchange. So I walked in, because yeah. Arts, of course, his name was Eddie Billups, and he was like, Freddie, where you been, man? Everybody's been looking for you, man. You know, you're, you, you're missing out on all of these parts. What's, what's up, man? I said, you know, uh, I've just been having a rough time of it. I don't know what to do. He said, well, man, listen, listen, let's forget all that. I got something for you, Freddie. How about you start a youth theater company? I said, what? <laughs> a youth theater company? I said, no, man, I'm an actor, man. It's all about me. <laughs> you know, I'm an actor. <laughs> He said, no, but listen, I'll, I'll get you a 501c3, and I'll, I, I would, uh, I'll, I'll do all of your grants, and you, I'll get the funding. And guess what? It's a theater in this building. It's called the Paul Robeson Theater. And you can work out of there, man. Come on. Come down here. Look at the theater. I was like, hmm. Well, just let me go. I really didn't feel like it. The walk <laughs> <laughs> like I was walking the last mile because I really wanted to get home and get back closed up like I for almost before. So, and, and, and Christine, when I walked into the theater, it was like it was like angels with hearts. It was like oh, oh. I was like oh wow. 
it wasn't the greatest place, as you know, because I think you've been there. But oh, yeah. It was a thing. It had, it had a stage. It had lights. It had, yep. it had a stage seats. And I was like, oh, I might could do something. No. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not giving up my career. No, Eddie, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, but no thank you. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so, so I began to walk down the hall, and uh, he kept saying, man, you sure? You sure, man? Are you part of this? Hey, I'll do everything, man. Only thing you have to do is create the work. I know you can do it. But I was like, uh. So I got down there to the door, same door that I came in, and I put my hand on the door. And I turned around and I looked at him and his hand was on the door and he was looking at me. And I was like, and I don't know why I said this, but it changed my life. I said, okay, Eddie, I'll do it. I, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> and he says, okay, uh, there's this kid upstairs. His dad works in the, in, in the, the art department. His name is Jahi Kears, and he has a little brother by the name of Jamal Kears. And we can start with them and and build it, and they they will come. And the rest is history. The rest, man. For those of you watching, the Freddie Hendrix Youth Ensemble of Atlanta was game-changing. It affected so many of our lives. Um, And I'm just going to speak for myself and how a lot of us who are members from around the world. Freddie, I'm curious to know... Let me just say this, for my students watching, I have a very high standard of how you show up, your own personal standard of excellence, right? And so when we were were young in training with you, we didn't have scripts. All the shows were were off the dome. This is the script script that you guys learn from. Yes, I want y'all to hear me. I'm saying, y'all probably not getting it. We never had paper scripts ever. Every show either came out of the mind of Freddie or came out of the mind of all of us in a circle, vibing, getting into this flow, connecting to ourselves, to our soul. And if you missed a rehearsal, someone else was there to do the part that you weren't there to do. You want to go to a concert? Fine. You want to hang out? Cool. But when you come back, that part probably won't be yours because shout out to Enoch in the group. I see you, Enoch. I see you, Kobe. If you missed it, oh well. So can you talk about how you think or how you know that process of us not just being stuck to paper all the time? How did that free us as artists? Well, that makes you so much better when you do have the paper. <laughs> you know, that makes you so much better at the memorization. It, um, it, you're working on a muscle. You know, you're, you're working on... Uh, a creative uh, memorization uh, muscle that when when you're on the set and you get a script, you say, "Okay, blah 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 blah, I got it." Yeah. You know what I you mean. Know, and the reason, talk- the reason that you got to write, the reason I gave you so many writing assignments because you know research was key. Yep. The writing. Assignments were so 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 important because you got to exercise that. Not everybody's a writer. Now, when somebody asks you, well, "What do you do? You do you do you write? Yes. Do you sing? Yes. Do you dance? <laughs> yes. Because it's not up to you. You 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 know you can't do that. You know the 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 person that's sitting behind the desk or sitting behind the table. Let, let them make that decision. You may see it off key, but they what they want. You know, you never go into audition saying you can't do anything. You know, you you know that's that's crazy. That's crazy, and that's why I'm saying you got to walk in there with confidence. That kind of confident, that confidence wins. You know, all artists, all actors have to have a winning, a winning, a winning, a winning, a winning, a winning mindset. Yes. And also in that winning mindset that comes when, when you begin to appreciate who you are as a person and love yourself, that comes, you know, that comes and let everybody else be themselves. Let everybody else love themselves and everything everybody does is okay. You know, I have no judgment about anything or anybody. I don't do that. 
you know, I don't know if, <laughs> you know, it, it seems like it's something new for me. Like it was like a new revelation or something, but I'm not sure. But, um, but, but that love thing, especially I mean, just for people in general, but as artists, man, we need, we need that. We need that. And we also, especially for black artists, I'm going to speak to it right now, create your own stuff, pay yourself. Yeah. Pay for you. You know, we're always, people are always like, oh, I can't get no work. I can't get no work. I'm not getting any auditions. I'm not doing, I'm not, well, whose fault is that? Don't worry about getting, if you're not getting them, make it. Well, I can't write. Have you tried? I mean, mm. I, I can't direct. Have you tried? I can't produce. Have you tried? I can't give a class. Have you tried? Do like Christine Horn. Do it all. You know? Well, you know, uh, we need to start creating our own work. You know? And that's what I really wanted to impart in all of the, 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 the artists that I've worked with throughout the years. You know, um, that you can do this. You know, greatness is in you. Greatness lives in you because we're born great. Yes. We're born Ooh. great. And greatness, yes. is, and greatness is doing this while we're growing up is going. That's us finding our passion. And when we lock into that pas our passion, that's when we find, the, we find the greatness, the only thing to do from greater. You know, or does great. Freddie, I want to I want to quote you. For those of you who have my book, Playing Small, you'll notice on the third page, there's a quote by you, Freddie. Greatness is inevitable I when like folk marries this. passion <laughs> and the desire is just as strong as the need. Right. That's your quote. I love Absolutely. that. And the most important thing for me is the desire. It's like, and, and the need, you know, as human beings, what do we need? We need water. We need food. We need to be touched. We just need so many things. And when we need uh, our, our art, or our passion, the way, or when we desire our, our passion, the way we need all of those things, we're in. That means, because for artists, it's about sacrifice. We have to sacrifice something. You know, you hear about these artists sleeping in their cars or, or sleeping on friends' couch, and, and they've been doing it for six months, and, and their break comes. That's sacrifice. You know, um, with you guys, I sacrificed <laughs> so much. I sacrificed uh, a love life because everybody was like, it's either me or those. Of course, they lost because you guys were my life and, yeah. and still are. But but it, but it was about you then, you know. Now I've grown a bit as far as that goes. But um, yeah, Christine, who I sacrificed by, I, I think at one time I may have had seven or eight people living in my house. And now some of those people are, are, are nominated for Tonys this year. Yep. Yep. You know, and you were so blessed because you had so many people coming in to feed you. You know, you had people like Jane Fonda, Stokely yep. Carmichael, Carmen, yes. Monterey, Asa Ricks. If all these people do your homework, you know, go and research these people. You know what I mean? Uh, yep. uh, Woody Harrell, you know, Courtney Cox, you know, people like feeding you. You know, it's My like we. We were living in a bubble. You know, we I mean? were. We were. You guys are the Broadway of Atlanta. Really? It was amazing. We're just, we're just making it happen. They used to call us in Atlanta, for those of you watching, Freddie's Kids. Whenever we would actually be at an audition at the Alliance Theater or anywhere, they'd be like, oh, they go Freddie's Kids. They already knew the standard was high. And like they had to bring their A game. Freddie, I met you at Tri-Cities High School when you came to teach in our magnet department. Yeah. <laughs> I had just moved from New York. Shout out to my mom, Valerie Horn, who's in the chat right now. We moved to Georgia in 1992. 
And I was like, oh, the South. Ugh. But my mother sacrificed herself and she made sure she moved uh, in, a, in the district that I could go to this performing arts high school, which, you know, which is world renowned. Talk about, Freddie, how we met, how we connected. I love this story. You said this was 92, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I had been at Tri-City. No, that was my first year, actually. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I think you were a sophomore. And, and I think, this, if I'm not mistaken, this was the first day of school. I was trying to uh, learn where my mailbox was, you know what I'm saying? Because I had never been to a mailbox before. Because I was supposed to be at a teacher meeting three before, but I was in a rehearsal, so I missed them. But they let me go on and come to, to teach. So I was at the mailbox. I saw this girl just floating by with grace, elegance. Oh, you know, I had created a show uh, like in 1990 that I called uh, Rhymes and Reasons. And it's about, um, it was about uh, uh, child abuse, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was this, um, man, some like sex trafficking, all of that kind of stuff. It's what it is now. And there was this young girl who was like 14 or 15 that wore this red dress and she was so beautiful. And she really looked, didn't look 14, she looked 18, 19, 20, something like that. And I was like, um, now how am I gonna find somebody that beautiful? And here comes this angel walking down the hall, floating, smiling, with so much grace. I said, that's her, that's her. I said, God, but there are like over 2,500 students in this school. I don't even know if she's an actor. If she wants <laughs> to be an actor. So this was, <laughs> So, you know, back then I used to drive this little cart down the hall because, you know, I was uh, like a roving teacher. You know, I had my right. classrooms were all over the school. And, and the kids would say, here comes Mr. Hendricks. She comes in Mr. Speedy <laughs> through the hallways. And then I went to my sixth period classroom and I was setting up. This was the theater class. This was right before we had the after school program, which we call Magnet. And in walks this, this young lady. In walks Christine Horn, and I was like, ah. And I'm going to ask you a question. Who was Mary uh, Mac? Who was Mary Mac? Who got that part? I got that part. <laughs> it's in the school <laughs> yearbook. There's a picture in the school well, yearbook. There's a picture in the yearbook of me on stage doing that. And that's, it's, that's, it's how it all began. It's how it all began. And we have really done countless shows since then, created. We've even done uh, original pieces, uh, not original pieces, but you know, scripts that are already produced or are already written. We've done those together. I can't even count on many shows we've done together. Did you yeah. travel ever travel over with us? And not out of the country. I didn't get to go to South Africa. I was already, I was already I think I was back in college or just away, but I got to just in, in the locals in the states in these United States. Freddie, I want to I want to yeah. ask you about I want to ask you about how you managed to see so many people. Like I, I I'm I'm coming into that myself right now, having coached like hundreds of actors. And I see you guys out there, and like. I, I meet them. I hear something about them. I, I use that to motivate them. Sometimes you and I talk and we talk about these things, but especially yeah. kids at, at an age and at a stage where there's so much happening internally in our, in our own houses, lack of self-confidence. We're, you know, going through hormones. Like how did you make, cause you have a gift and anyone who's met you or experienced you even now, if you were to take Freddie's acting class at the Good Studio in Atlanta, he had. It doesn't matter how old you are. You have a way of seeing like through to people, and then using that to help inspire them to stand in their greatness. Like how how does that work in your brain? How what's that process? If you've even if you can even verbalize that. You know what? It's really hard. To verbalize, but I, what I do is I listen. 
because I'm just I'm a vessel. You know, it doesn't it just comes. You know, I'm just I have just embraced my gift. You know, um, there was a time when I shied away from it because I was ashamed of it. That I, yeah, because I didn't want people to look at me <laughs> like, oh, that Freddie Andrews guy, he's strange. You know what I mean? He looks inside of people. He can he he can choose actors, you know, because there were a lot of actors that I chose for uh, lead parts at, at a lot of places. And people were like, why you choose her? Why you choose him? I say, trust me. And then at the end of the process, they end up coming. I'm sorry, Freddie, you were right. And that's why I'm saying I have no idea. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it just comes through me. It's like a gift. It's, yeah. It's a muscle that I have too, I guess. It's like a basketball player being able to shoot hoops. You know, you say, well, how do you shoot? Well, you know, you, you, re- you practice and you practice and you practice. And for me, you know, I, and, and that muscle gets strengthened. And I practiced and I practiced and my muscle has gotten stronger and stronger. And in that, I believe that I can do it. I believe that I can do anything. You know, it's like, you know, like I used to teach you that acting is, is, is like, it's like doing, doing the research, doing the work, doing the work to get to being, which is like having the character introduced themselves to you, you know, <laughs> doing that. And then after that happens, it's just believing it all, man. You just got to believe it. When you leave, you know, <laughs> like the Wizard of Oz and the Wiz and all of those things, yeah. I never realized the power behind um, um, that word until some stuff, uh, uh, as far as believing, hit me. You know, it has to hit you before you to, for, for you to believe it. But you have to work it. You know, you have to <laughs> you, you you have to take a step. You know what I mean? You have to you have to draw a line that says this is where I used to be, and I'm gonna step over this line, and from now on I'm going to believe. And people say, is it that simple? I say, yeah. If you want it, if you want it, it is that simple. For Freddie, because I have to share. Oh, sorry, you have a you know, it's on. like, are, are you you're hearing everything? <laughs> okay. It's like uh, our ancestors, uh, I think it could probably goes to everybody, but I know for Black people, African-American people, you know, our ancestors, you know, they're with us each and every day, you know, and all of the stuff that, that, that they've gone through, all the emotions that they felt during slavery, um, the, the mother's children being taken away from them, or the 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 the, 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 the husband sleeping with his wife, and and the and, and the slave master come and get the wife, and and and, and take her to the bedroom, and the husband's standing outside of the window listening to her cry or whatever, or you know, like or like, uh, and then maybe later on the lynchings and all that being set on fire, all those emotions that our ancestors had, they're inside of us. Yeah. The artist is tapping into that. And I just believe that. I don't know if that's a new theory <laughs> about, about how emotions might come or not, but I know, I think it works. You know, yeah. you just have to, and that, that believing that it works, believing that something else other than yourself can help you accomplish whatever you have to accomplish as an artist. Freddie, I have a question for you on that. And I deal with this a lot as a coach myself. And you and I have talked about this. I've, y'all, I call Freddie sometimes and be like, I have this client and I'm trying to break through this barrier with her or with him. Um, and you give me amazing tips. But Oftentimes, especially I'm going to speak especially to adults now, right? Who we're grown, we we've we've been through stuff, and I'm sure you see this when you're when you're teaching because you don't. The Freddie Hendrix experience is an experience. This isn't you go to his class and oh here's your sides and here's your you know like you used to have us take off any any jewelry. Freddie would say take it all. If, if you're trying to be cute up in this theater, up in this room, stop change, put sweats on, take off earrings, ladies, put your hair up because he didn't, you didn't, you 
made sure we didn't have any excuse to not be as free as possible. And I see as, as a coach now and then still as an actor, there's, there's a lot of us who are still not allowing ourselves to be free, whether it's who we're reading with or how we think we're preparing. Oftentimes, Freddie said, Christine, you really went there. And I'm like, well, where, where else is there to go? So can you talk about the block that actors have because they're afraid? All that stuff you said, Freddie, about our ancestors and things we've been through tapping in. People are afraid to go there, I think, in fear of not being able to come back as if they won't be able to come back to themselves. So what do you say to that actor to, to help them with that? That's the question I want to ask them. Do you want to be success? It's going to be different. You know, from this, I hope people develop their own methods, their own style, their own thing. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, you know, so it's like, that's a hard question. I know. <laughs> to where people, they did not want to live in it. You know, as, as an actor, you have to live, you know, with every, you know, it's like you build your house, you live in it. And then you, and you build that house, you build that character house, and you live in it, you know, and, it, and inside that house, there's emotions, there's uh, different characteristics of, of, of whatever, different everything. And, and have that space for that time. And then when the next part comes, like I said, acting is doing, that's what you do, build that. You build another house for that character. And you live in that, you know, um, because fear, <laughs> You know, I, I guess fear is is relevant. It's it's but let me tell you, but it's, it's it's real. I say that, but it's not a friend. You know, it doesn't love you. Why did you want to embrace something that doesn't love you? Mm. Come on now. And, you know, and like I've been, I've I've accused myself of that before as, as an artist. So far, I know that that is real. You know, because I've self-sabotaged myself before until I just realized that, what are you doing, man? <laughs> what are you doing? And then, then I changed, changed my course. And from, I don't want all of the actors out there to understand that that course that you're going on can be changed. Look, you have, uh, you come to like Christine Horn with a pail, you know, and the pail is empty. You know, and she's pouring, pouring um, jewels, pouring love, pouring um, uh, ambition, empowerment, all of that into you. And and if if you're not understanding that, you need to you need to go somewhere else. If you can't take that pail and hold it up and say, "Look, this is where I am now. This is what I am now. I'm all of these great things." I am greatness. Greatness lives in me. Greater is here. You know, greater is here. You know, so it's like, um, because that's the way I feel about my kids, you know, uh, now. You know, I know a lot. Well, I, have, I still have kids, you know, um, because I'm still working at it. I'm still loving on folk. I'm still loving on babies. I'm still loving on teenagers. I'm still loving on adults. Because because that's my calling, and uh, you know, and and I think we all have a calling, you know, as as artists, and just live in it. <laughs> Don't neglect it, you know. If you come, if, if you've come to Christine because you think you have it, you know that. Don't waste it. Go for it. Go for it because I know she empowers you. So take what she tells you and put that thing to work because it'll work for you. Because because we're all beautiful. You know, we're all beautiful people. We're all beautiful human beings. God didn't create anything that wasn't beautiful. Look around you, look at the sky, look at the land, listen to the birds and how beautiful well, that sound. Running up a, even a squirrel running up a tree, you know, which, which I catch that when I'm taking my uh, chase out to walk and chases my puppy. I'm like, oh, wow, Lord, that is so beautiful, that squirrel running up that tree. So you have to come to that realization. If God did that for all of all, all of that for nature, and you're a part of that, He can do that for you, and that's in you. You just have to believe that, and it'll happen.
Freddie, can you talk a bit about this is a word any of anybody who trained with you knows. Focus. Focus. Mm. Oh, focus, okay. Man. Well, because well, I after being in LA and being in these mm-hmm. Hollywood streets, there's not the the focus is not the same for everybody. So mm-hmm. just to give you all the background, when we were coming up training with Freddie in the in our youth ensemble of Atlanta. He was like, focus, Pookie. We make fun of him, by the way. You know, you know, you make fun of your father, right? P- focus, Pookie. What you doing? You supposed to be focused. Like, basically, I don't care what they doing over there. I don't care what they're doing over there. What are you doing? So same thing yeah, for like, you all. Door. Is that door has nothing for you? You know, every year. What does that door have? Whatever it has for you, go to that door. I'm in front of you right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but that served me so much. It serves me to this day because I'll be on set and people are laughing and doing whatever. And like, I'm in my zone when I'm on set. Like, I know what I do on that camera. It has to represent me and my standard. And that might look like I'm not kicking with you every two seconds when we say cut. Or if we're on the in the theater, so can you talk about the importance of that and how you see, for let's say for someone who's not used to being that focused, what tips can you give an actor who's never had that structure? What does that mean, and how does that impact your performance? I think focus is pretty simple. You know, it's like it's just centering your attention on. It's like if I put up my look at my finger, focus on that. Center your attention on, 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 on your art. Center your attention on your lines. Center your attention on your side. Center your attention on your script. Focus is like, can you imagine going into surgery without the doctor having a scalpel? Well, that's like an actor going on set without focus. God, focus is central to everything because I don't, I don't know if I said this, but I think, I don't know. But people will try to steal your focus on set. Yes, people, yes. People steal your focus in theater. They say, oh, she's yes. beautiful. I'm going to get her. She thinks she's something. Oh, he's something. Like and they'll try to take it. Yes. And then, <laughs> you know, and then, when, you, and then when you let them take your focus, you go on there and you suck. That's their fault. That's not their fault. You got to focus. You got to center your attention on whatever you're doing. And it's really easy. And, and it all goes back to uh, just, just loving yourself and wanting the best for yourself. If you, if you, as an artist, if you want the best for yourself, you're going to focus. It's not that difficult. <laughs> you know, it, that's, that's part of the, you know, it's like my kids, when we were doing YA, they didn't go to the prom. They didn't go to no concerts. Freddie, hold on. Before you talk about a concert, I got to share a story that anybody who was in who was there back in the day knows. Y'all, let me, and any YA member, you already know I'm going to say. So y'all watching, it was Picture It, Atlanta, Erica Badu in concert. We in high school. <laughs> That's why he's laughing now. We in high school. We like, I want to go to the, I want to go to the Erica Badu concert. Or was it Jill Scott? One of the two. It was one of the two. Okay. I think it doesn't insert soul star here. And we all whispering, everybody trying to figure out how they're going to miss rehearsal or what we going to do. And Freddie's like, he comes to the rehearsal the day, like the day before. He's like, I hear some of y'all want to, <laughs> I hear some of y'all want to go to the Erica Badu concert. She got hers. You better get yours. And y'all, that's all he and list any our whole crew to this day. We laugh about this, but it is so. Tr- Guess how many of us went to that Erica Badu concert? Because the thing was, if you missed, if you your, missed that, what? Look how many got yours now. All these people, you got yours. I got mine. Got it. Y'all got. Y'all got it. Got mine. Do you, do you regret not going to the concert? Not at all. I saw Erica Badu years later. It was all right. <laughs> Yeah, 
<laughs> Fred, I just love that story. And anybody, if you watch the replay, especially anybody from Youth Ensemble, you know that story. Freddie, I want to talk about your classes. First, first, and first of all, let me just say thank you. I want to say publicly, I love you so much. And I'm so grateful for how you have loved on me and taught me. And I love that I get to be an extension of you in the work that I do now. That's why so many of my students are like, who is this Freddie Hendricks? I just want to say that publicly. But you, wow. you know, just <laughs> any way I can just love on you publicly. And I just am so honored. But, you know, you took, you had a, a lot of personal stuff going on with family and now you are back and you are, you are working again. You are teaching again, right? I know your work, you do private coaching and guys, don't worry when this video is over, I'm going to, I'll edit it and put links on how you can kind of get in touch with Freddie. Um, but you do coaching on zoom and you teach at the good studio in Atlanta, um, Saturdays at 1 PM. But, and it's, I want to say this to anyone watching, especially if you're in Atlanta or if you coach with Freddie through Zoom from any other country, his coaching is an experience, as you've heard. You heard me talk about we never had scripts. Every single show we did was off the top of our dome. Everything. Like, so this is a different kind of situation. You can't come to Freddie and be like, oh, what method is this? Well, it's the Hendrix method. It's the Hendrix experience. And That's right. I, and I, I think, and I'm going to speak for myself, I think someone coming into your space for like class number one or class number two might be a hair intimidated at times. And I think it goes back to what you said when we started this conversation 45 minutes ago about love of self and how can you mm -hmm. love, love yourself? How can you love the art? And so I dare say when they walk into your space and you're asking them about them and asking them basically is that exercise, Freddie, of the peeling off. Yes. peeling off ourselves, right? And stepping into characters and basically showing the white meat and opening ourselves up, opening our vessel. How, what do you find? You've coached a lot of people. How do you find people react to that? I'm sure you see one thing or the other, like they run away or they go toward it. Like you said, a lot of people are intimidated, you know, and um, because... At the end of my class, I have like 10 minutes. I mean, my not class, excuse me, I apologize. At the end of my experience, I have a period and they're like, you know, I got scared because I've never experienced anything like this before and you wanted me to do so much. And you know what I do then when I hear that? I just love on them, you know what I mean? I just tell them how worthy they are. And you know, nine times I've something great in them. So there's something great for everybody. You just have to find it, you know? So, so I, I kind of, uh, it, it's kind of like a light bulb that goes off in them. And they're back the next, the next, the next time they come back and they get, they thank me for opening them up. You know what I mean? Uh, and I understand, you know, especially when I'm in the zone and I'm working, you gotta be with me. You gotta be with me. If you're not with me, uh, you're not gonna understand what's going on. And when I say with me, you gotta be focused, that's all. When you focus, you can understand the process. You can surrender to the process. You know what I mean? You know, because like I said earlier, it's non-traditional, it's unorthodox. Right. And I'm so glad that it is because I wanna mark my own trail. I don't wanna yeah. walk down anybody. You know? You have. Every you, know, you go out, you go out to the forest and you see these trails and you say, hmm, which one do I want to go down? Uh, maybe I'll go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, he oh, that trail's great. I said, no, nah, no, nah, nah, I gotta do my own. It's, you know what I mean? And and I just want I just want all of the actors to think that way. You know, it's about it's about living your best life, loving yourself. And I don't know. I think I answered the question. Um, you did. You did. I'm just. I. I'm so excited for people to experience you. Um, and I just know that so many actors are just like, can you give me the quick magic pill to help me book more work? I don't want to do you know, all this exercise stuff. You know what it is? <laughs> the quick magic pill is to never stop. Mm. 
The quick magic pill is to stop asking that question. The hmm. quick magic pill is, <laughs> is to, if you want it, if you love it, get it. You know, I t- you know, and, and I don't know if you, you believe this, but, you know, people come in, in, in front of me and they're thinking. Not being. Actors don't, yeah, but you don't think you do it. You do. Actors do. They don't think. So you're thinking like, why am I not getting that part? Because you, that's why i getting it. Why, why this? Keep on going, baby. It'll come. I was thinking about this earlier. You can never, you can never stop. You can just never stop. And I think I might have said this earlier, but, and I hate this, uh, this phrase about paying your dues, but it's kind of real actor. We, that, the thing, that, that, that's pain. So it's like, um, you just got to do it and you can never stop. You know, I don't care if you ain't worked in two years, if you want it, it's probably going to come when you stop. It probably mm-hmm. would have come on the next audition when you stop. Probably. That's that three feet of but, gold. It's that analogy, but, yeah. three feet of gold. You're digging, you're digging, you're chiseling, and right, and you stop right before you get to that next level where the, where the goal was. You guys, if you're watching and yeah. you've enjoyed please let us know in the comments. Um, If you have a question for Freddie, please uh, put your question in the comments. Freddie, Ian Johnson, Ian Johnson from, uh, from back. He says, he says, he said, give give him their flowers. He said, I agree with Christine Horn, blessed to have instructors and mentors like Freddie Hendricks, whose high standards set the bar, whether actor, artist, dancer, musician, the influence has always been major. Thank you, Ian, for the, for the, for that love. That love shop. You know, Christine, as 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 a creator, a teacher, a director, you know, when I'm in front of people, I'm not trying to raise actors. I'm not trying to raise dancers. I'm not trying to raise raise singers. I'm trying to raise good people that want to be acting dancers and all that. Be a good person. Live in love, man. That's that's the, that, that's what that's what I'm trying to raise. You know, so it's like if you think you're coming to to Freddie Hendricks uh, experience and it's going to be another class. No, nah, that's not going to that's not it. It's more than that. It's so much more. Hopefully it will get a change and it help you help you to be a catalyst for change for other people. And that's why I'm so glad that Christine came into my life, because look what she's doing now for for so many people. You know, she's changing lives. You know, and I, I, used, I think I used to say that a lot to you guys. You know, it's all about changing lives. You know? and, and that's what you're doing. That's why I'm so proud of you for what you're Thank doing. You. Because, you know, last thing for you, there is no one better. Mm. There is. There Somebody is put that in the chat. Somebody put that in the chat. There is no one better. One of a kind, wonderful. One of a kind, original. That's right. That's right. Mm. Right. Freddie, I have a question that came in for you um, from, from Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Brandon asked Freddie, what, what tips do you have for actors who want to tap into playwriting for the first time? Uh, I'm going to make this really quick and simple. Write a play. Just write. You know, just write. Um, because if you write a play, that makes you a playwright. Come on. You know, then, then, then it's about getting that out to other people. Now that's that's the next step after after the writing. And you know, uh once Brandon. Uh oh, Freddie refers. Freddie. And Brandon, you could be like, oh, I play. or uh, a script or whatever. Just write, write man. Just write. If, if if that's in your spirit and that's in your heart, write. You don't have to take care of it. It will take care of you because it is done. Do it. It is done, Brandon. Do it. That's it. When you do it, man, I promise you, Brandon, I see this right now. If you have something, something great is going to come from that. And when you start, or if you haven't done something, 
the first thing you write, I believe something's great is going to come from that. Just keep believing in yourself and loving yourself because I'll keep you in my spirit as a writer, Brandon the writer, and I'll be pushing that forward. So you're not by yourself, brother. I just put that in the chat, Brandon, the writer. Brandon, thank you for that. I know uh, the sound went out a little bit, but, you know, Freddie, you touched on, that's such a great question, Brandon, but I think what we're afraid of is being not good enough. So how do you, you know, Freddie, you've created so many shows. And so even a question like this, how can I start singing? How can I start, how can I record an album or write a song or write a play? It's that thing I see all the time, fear of being good enough. And so how do you push past that as an artist and just allow yourself to create? Well, then you're living in judgment. Who can judge that but you? You know, you, you know, somebody might throw the, you might get somebody the script or the song or whatever they say, this is trash. Then the next thing you do is, here's the script, here's, here's the script, here's the song, that's trash. Here's the script, here's the song, that's trash. Here's the script, here's the song, that's trash. Oh, I like this. Oh, I like this. Just add something. The thing is to believe and never give up. You know, and I don't know if I answered Brandon's question. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just, you know, I live from my heart, and that's what my heart was giving me. So he said, Brandon said, Amen. Blessings to you. So thank you, Freddie, for that. Um, because listen, the yes could be right around the corner. But the yes, I would. I feel like I, what I'm hearing you say, Freddie, and what I believe that you have to give yourself the first yes. Yeah. The yeah, because you're not gonna understand what a yes is if you don't give mm -hmm. it to yourself. How are you gonna understand when somebody if you ain't said yes to yourself? That's not gonna happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to. Uh, uh, I. I I employ, I guess. Yeah, that's a good word. I, I charge all of all of the actors on here to just believe in yourself and do what you want because I feel in my spirit that there are some of you out there that I, I really want to do this. I really want to do that. I really got this. I really want to uh, do it. That leads, that leads to another question. Another question oh. that came from... Uh, Delora Lambert asks Freddie, she says, what advice do you have for someone who does everything? Should you focus on just one thing at a time versus writing and singing and acting, et cetera? Multi-passionate, multi-artist. Wow, what a gift to have. Um, I think it's, it's probably good to start with one, you know, probably start with writing a script, put music to it, direct it, <laughs> you know, you do all those things. You know, Freddie, you, <laughs> you basically said, just do it all. Just do it in this order. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't have to really have to be in that order, but do it in yeah. some. Do it in some order that works for you. Um, or, or sometimes what you have to do, you might have to say, well, I think I'm going to, see, because I can't choose this for anybody. You have to choose it for yourself. It's like, I think what I'm going to do is... I'm going to go and record a song. That's what I want to do. But when you make that decision, you have to do it. You have to be committed to it. You have to be focused on it. And then that's going to make room for something else. Maybe uh, writing or maybe whatever else. You know what I mean? One, All of those things are going to make room for each other. But you have to start with one thing, I think. Yeah. And then if you start with one thing, you, you'll see how to incorporate the other things. Freddie, what do you have? And this is my personal question because I know so many artists watching are have experienced this. You know, we talked about this earlier. This industry is not for the faint of heart, right? It's a lot of it's an emotional yeah. roller coaster all the time. Yeah. So how yeah. how have you? What piece of advice do you have when when you need to reset? I'm sure many of you watching have, have, have had moments where you want to throw in the towel, you're frustrated, you want the talent, your talent should speak for itself. But in this industry now, it's marketing and it's all these other pieces that it's not that simple. So when you want to throw in the towel, Freddie, like when you're just like, I'm over this industry, like. 
What are your thoughts on that? Because I know my, I know a lot of people watching have these moments, especially with COVID and this industry being so fickle. Yeah. Hopefully that moment won't last long, but live in it. Mm. Live in the moment. You know, I, uh, I'm just getting back. And I, I had to do that. You know, I had to take care of my mom for a long time. And I left the business. If it wasn't yeah. for the kids keeping my, um, my name out there, nobody is a little bit, there's still a little buzz about it because of my kids. So that was a break for me from the business that I didn't want. But I had to take that because of love. And now I'm having to restart again. So I, what I've learned from that is, and I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. And, but I'm feeling it, to, I'm feeling it enough to know that it's not going to leave me. You know what mm, I mean? It's not I mean, going to. Take the time for yourself. Love on you. You're not feeling okay. Just, just don't quit. Take, take a month. Go to the Bahamas. Go to Jamaica. Go to uh, a lake close to your house. Go to the park. Chill. Pray. Pray. Prayer changes that. You hear Chase, yeah. Christine? I hear Chase. Woke up from his nap like, what y'all doing? We're going to get ready to go. I, I just have a yeah. couple of questions. And if you have any questions, please put them in the okay. chat. We're about, to, we're about to wrap. This has been amazing. Gosh, we've been in here an hour. So we're getting ready to go. So if there's something pressing on your heart, as you can see, you know, if you're just tuning in or if you're watching the replay, oh, let me do a full. Chase, look at everybody. Look at everybody. Look at everybody. <laughs> my face. He does like my dog. You Don't like me. <laughs> Freddie, before we go, I have one last question to ask you. Sorry that. Because he was been nipping on my leg for like 45 minutes. <laughs> Okay. He's like, he's like, it's time to go out. I don't know what you're doing. Um, for those of you watching, as you can see, this is what I come from. And I've been blessed, 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 blessed. Freddie, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? <laughs> this is it. I, this is something everybody's gonna have to sleep on. But, but, but it's a lot of advice because from a lot of mentors that I have, but we were performing and I was sitting at the table with Quincy Jones and I looked at him and I said, and he said, uh, he, he was shaking his head like this. He really didn't say anything as, as, as everybody was performing. And then after it was over, I said, Mr. Jones, did you like the kids? He looked at me, he says, what is there not to like? Hmm. That stuck with me. For some people, it might have been really simple, but and that that just that stuck with me. And I got something else. One of my mentors, yeah. Walter Dallas, who was the uh, artistic director of the Proposition Theater here in Atlanta, and also the uh, artistic director of the Freedom Theater in Philadelphia. One time, I wanted. And I'll leave you guys with this. I wanted to quit. And I went up to Walter. I was like, and I was only like 21. I was like, Walter, I don't know if I can do this. I can't, you know, I, I, I think I'm going to uh, try to get a job somewhere. He was like, Freddie, you can't. You can't do anything else. This is your passion. And I know it's your passion. You know it's your passion. So why are you, why are you fooling yourself? What you, what you going to do? And I thought, after I thought about what I was going to do, I thought about, wow, what do I need to feed my spirit? And I get it. I can't do anything else because I need my art. I'm an artist, man. You know? It's like a doctor or a lawyer, you know? They know what they want. They know what they want to do. You know, I'm an artist. I know what I want to do. You know? Being an artist is, is so great. It's just so fulfilling for me. You know? And it's a world profession. And I say people aren't artists. And, and, and I, I get in trouble for this, but you're not an artist. If you work at Burger King and, and, and you do art on the side, 
I don't I don't think you should call yourself an artist. I think you should call yourself I work at Burger King and I do art on the side. I'm an artist on the side. Because think about this. How would you like to go to and the doctor comes in with a Burger King uniform on? <laughs> our profession is or, or, or operate you know if you work in somewhere else he's a doctor that doctor that profession is important so our profession is just as important as that well you know Freddie I don't think that uh, you know I'm not making a lot of money right now I don't think it's good for me and, you know, it's unfair for you to say I'm not an artist just because I work at CVS. So, Come on, you know, Chase. Like, um, I'm sorry. I just feel that way because I feel I, pay. I consider myself as an artist because that's all I do. It's not easy. I have sacrificed. I have many problems. You know, I have problems paying my bills, but you know, I have faith and the faith pulls me through all of that. And it happens and the next thing you know, I'm going to the UK <laughs> or I'm going to Amsterdam or I'm going to Johannesburg just because of that faith. So, um, I just, you know, I don't, I don't want anybody to be poor or nothing, but you know, if you're gonna be an artist, put everything into your art. And you might, it might not be TV for you. It might not be plays for you. It might be not movies or the corner studio for you. It might be behind the scenes because they make more money than we do and the actors and directors do anyway. But anyway. I love it. I, I, love, you, people, I love you, Freddie Hendrix. I'm, I'm, we're laughing yeah. at the doctor in the Burger King uniform. We're laughing at the doctor in the Burger King uniform. We all have the visual now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you get what I'm saying. Right? Oh, I absolutely do. I absolutely do. That's just as, as important. Why an artist, you know, why do we have to put everything else with it? You know, a doctor or a lawyer, they're a lawyer. They're a doctor. You know what I'm saying? Somebody taking me to court, I don't want them working at Mako, you know, or something. You know what I'm saying? And then coming in to do my job and me, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh my gosh. I love it. You all, I am so grateful. Freddie, thank you for being here. I'm going to, when this Hello. is done, we're gonna edit it. I'm gonna put all your all your links and stuff so people can come find you. If you're in Atlanta, you're an, an actor, or if you just want to tap into yourself, you need to come see Freddie Hendricks at the Good Studio in Atlanta and have the Freddie Hendricks experience. We couldn't get into everything today, but as you can see, he's impacted my life on a soul level. And I would love for you to be able to experience him. And actually you have, you know, you there's so many artists out here entertaining you who have had the chance to work with Freddie. I mean, it's just ridiculous the amount of people he's touched. Freddie, I love you. Go off, Chase. <laughs> have uh, Chase is amazing. Amazing. He's the whole <laughs> he, he did good. He did good. He did good. All of you, thank you for watching. This will be, oh. the replay will be available. Freddie, do you want to say anything before we head out? One final yeah, thing, yeah. one final thought? Man, let love live. Let love guide you. Not other people, not not other things. You know, if you have a question, love will answer it all, every time. Every time. And I know when I was younger, I used to say, well, what's love? What's that thing? Work on it. It'll come to you, but you got to work on it. It's just like your career. Work on it. All that'll come. And I love you guys so much. Thank you for hearing me. And um, it's been wonderful. And I hope to see you guys again. I really do. If not on Zoom, hopefully in person one day, in a theater, on set, somewhere. Yes. And I hope and pray that we'll be together. Yes.
All right, everybody, have an amazing night. Thank you for watching. I love you, Freddie. And I'll, this will be on the podcast, on the YouTube channel, all of it. I love you, Freddie. I'm going to text you when we're done. Good night, everybody.